copyright for old works. Happy New Year's in the public domain. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. Back with ways that we are winning and solution stories. We've got that good news story about the public domain. Plus, some Arizonans really don't like driverless cars. But first, the lighter side of government shutdowns. Government shutdowns equal national parks waiving outrageous $30 entry fees, plus people cleaning the park by themselves. As the CIA's favorite newspaper reports, the government shutdown has left America's national parks largely unsupervised. No one is at the gate. No one's collecting a fee. The visitor centers are closed. There are some law enforcement and emergency personnel on site, but certainly nothing as standard as a park ranger who can answer a question. People are streaming into the parks, enjoying the free access, but dot, 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 you'll have to scroll to the very, very, very bottom of the Washington Compost article to find that volunteers are picking up trash and cleaning bathrooms, collecting litter and donating toilet paper, but they bury that story at the bottom because, of course, it's all about getting orange man bad. At Joshua Tree National Park, this is on our buddy Sean's Twitter account. And again, everything we say and play always included down in the show notes. And just like the hashtags tweeted get you into the daily morning monarchies, of course, hashtag good news next week can get you right into this good news next week episode. Our buddy Sean tweeted at Joshua Tree National Park, which is open but unstaffed. Local do-gooders have been emptying trash cans, scrubbing toilets, and restocking toilet paper all of their own volition. So some other random news about how good the government is to us. I'm not sure, dude, if I, if I covered this in it already, but I may have forgot it and totally spaced it, man. U.S. Farm Bill includes industrial hemp legalization pushed by Oregon lawmakers. Now, of course, I'm making a joke because in hut industrial hemp does not get you high, although it can get us all really high on, of course, revenue and decentralized being able to grow it all and make it all ourselves. Exciting development as Mumia Abu-Jamal allowed to re-argue his case, and dark overlord hackers threaten to dump insurance files related to the 9-11 attacks. I know there's lots of folks out there getting super excited about this. I'm not going to hold my breath on it, but we'll still file it as a little bit of good news. Our second story this week on Good News Next Week, episode 74, if you are keeping score for the new year, and it's our first week of broadcasting here in January 2019, Wielding rocks and knives, Arizonans attack self-driving cars. Really interesting story. An October 2018 tire slashing was one of nearly two dozen attacks on driverless vehicles over the past two years in Chandler, a city near Phoenix, Arizona, where Waymo started testing their driverless vans in 2017. Some people have pelted Waymo vans with rocks. Others have repeatedly tried to run vehicles off the road. One woman screamed at one of the vans, telling it to get out of her neighborhood. A man pulled up along alongside a Waymo vehicle and threaten the employee riding inside with a piece of PVC pipe. In one of the more harrowing episodes, a man waved a 22 cal revolver at a Waymo vehicle and the emergency backup driver at the wheel. He told the cops that he despises driverless cars, referring to the killing of a female pedestrian in March to make his case that happened in nearby Tempe, Arizona, by the self-driving Ubermobile. At least 21 such attacks have been leveled at, leveled at Waymo vans in Chandler, Arizona, as first reported by the Arizona Republic. Some analysts say they expect much more behavior as the nation... This is, this is where it gets all philosophical from the old gray lady. As the nation moves into a broader discussion about the potential for driverless cars to unleash colossal changes in American society, the debate touches on fears ranging from eliminating my jobs for drivers to ceding control over mobility to autonomous vehicles. People are lashing out justifiably. So says the one and only Douglas Rushkoff. I've been a fan of his for a long, long time. Of course, as the years roll on and you learn a little bit more, you realize, okay, art greater than artist. Douglas Rushkoff has written some fantastic books, some fantastic comic books, actually, for Vertigo. And some early, actually, Frontline series, I think, that were really probably formative for me back in the late 90s as I was studying media officially back at university. He made one. This is sidebar. Douglas Rushkoff made one called The Merchants of Cool, and he made a part two called The Persuaders, and it pretty much lays out how, of course, advertising infests cool little hidden underground scenes so they can, of course, exploit them for sales. 
People are lashing out justifiably, so said Douglas Rushkoff, media theorist at City University of New York and author of his latest book, Throwing Rocks at the Google Bus. He likened driverless cars to robotic incarnations of scabs, workers who refuse to join strikes or who take the place of those on strike. There's a growing sense that the giant corporations honing driverless technologies do not have our best interests at heart. Just think about the humans inside these vehicles who are essentially training the artificial intelligence intelligence that will replace them. So I think Arizona might have the right idea. Wielding rocks and knives, Arizonans attack self-driving cars, and we often mention many, many times, it's just one of my favorites, it's obviously at some sort of Ren fair, and someone's flying a drone over top and some dude with a slingshot takes one hit and just knocks it out of the sky. And of course, our fine feathered friends like Falcons are learning to take down the drones. Kill it with fire. Our third and final story on this Good News Next Week, episode 74, is our cover story. And the bell has already rung. The clock has already struck midnight on New Year's Eve. It is now past January 1st. And January 1st, 2019 was Public Domain Day. Works from 1923 are open to all. When the clock struck midnight on New Year's Eve, Movies, songs, books created in the United States in 1923, beloved cartoons like Felix the Cat, will be eligible for anyone to adapt, repurpose, and distribute as they friggin' please. A 20-year freeze on copyright extensions prevented a cache of 1923 works from entering the public domain, including Paramount's original Ten Commandments film, Charlie Chaplin's The Pilgrim, and novels, of course, by Aldous Huxley. Such a massive release of iconic works is unprecedented the experts say, especially, of course, in this digital age, as the last big public domain dump completely predates Google. For all of this, we can, of course, thank a now 21-year-old rule known as the Sonny Bono Copyright Term Extension Act, famously lobbied for by the Walt Disney Corporation, pejoratively dubbed the Mickey Mouse Protection Act. The new rules modified an existing law, hitting the brakes on copyright terms for already protected works. The act lengthened copyrights of corporate works made for hire to 95 years, up from 75 years, from their first publication or 120 years from their creation, thus, of course, delaying Mickey Mouse's earliest entrance into the public domain until 2024. It also granted copyright coverage to works published on or after January 1st, 1978 to, quote, life of the author plus 70 years. So we talked about this a little bit on some of our recent Friday Morning Monarchy shows where we look at the entertainment industrial complex and all, of course, the Kafkaesque labyrinthine world of ridiculous intellectual property rights and, of course, the copyright world. The terms for works published published in 1923, were retroactively amended and remained copyrighted for 95 years. The end of this dark age of copyright terms could usher in a new renaissance of creativity. As Motherboard, I think, kind of hopefully opines, we will include the links to, I think it's Duke University, seems to be running kind of the master list of what is literally tens of thousands of works entering the public domain that you are free to remix, remaster, and do whatever you want with. One of the sad parts, of course, about all this is not all of those things actually exist anymore. Some of those things were filmed on, of course, the highly flammable nitrate film and have long since burnt up into history. Of course, archive.org and all that stuff is doing fantastic work. Of course, we've been big fans of the Great 78 Project. You can find a, quite literally a million things on archive.org. You could cancel all of your stuff, all of your subscriptions, all of your big mainstream things. Of course, not, not your independent media support. You could cancel all of that stuff and entertain yourself and educate yourself, edutain, as we like to say here in the media monarchy kingdom, till the end of friggin' time. So there it is. Good news next week, episode 74. And what are we calling it? No copyright for old works, as we're having kind of a happy New Year's in the public domain. And that is episode 74 of Good News Next Week, as we are just now mentioning, of course, funding. We are still hemorrhaging users over at Patreon.com for a lot of different reasons, of course, around this time of year. Of course, people need to tighten their belts. But Patreon, of course, has been taking part in the deplatforming and censoring of lots of folks. So that's rightfully pissed a lot of people off. And we have lost hundreds of dollars and dozens of people on Patreon. What I would like and hope and would wish and, and would beg of you, quite simply, 
If you're going to cancel on Patreon because you're mad at them, please don't stop supporting your independent alternative work. It's kind of a strange place to draw the line in the sand about what you're going to stop doing. And what you're doing is essentially not funding your independent, non-commercial alternative media. I've been making Media Monarchy for 13 plus years. I'm not the greatest. I'm not the best. I don't have the biggest audience by any stretch. But we are real, we are passionate, and we have given you independent, non-commercial alternative media, news, music, memes, and more for 13 plus years. Never heard an ad, never heard a snake oil pitch, never heard a bunch of bullshit theories that we jump on some bandwagon of some Coke and Pepsi savior that comes along every 48 years. We are learning our way forward, as I like to say, in the Media Monarchy community, and there are some fantastic things we've got in store for 2019. Hope to see you join us, MediaMonarchy.com slash join or MediaMonarchy.com slash support. We've got Patreon, we've got PayPal, I've got Stripe, we've got something new called Bitbacker.io slash user slash Media Monarchy, a very simple layout. It looks like vintage Twitter, and it almost looks like old school, like IRC chat. It is very simple, and you can support us there using something called cryptocurrency, which everyone fled away from. And if you don't like any of that junk, we've got a classic good old post office box down here in Holy Faith, New Mexico. You can find the address and all the links right there on the MediaMonarchy.com website. Scroll to the bottom of the address and all the mailing stuff is all right there. As of course, the Bush and Clinton crime family said, you can just send us your cash. There it is. Good news next week, episode 74. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. Again, thanking you so much for listening, inviting you wholeheartedly to join us and support us in the Media Monarchy community, and reminding you, as always, my friends, like Jello Biafra says, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Pilato. Since 2005, Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology, and the occult. All remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com slash support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks.